and what have they told you about why they did that? Well, uh, not directly in the sense that I don't know who the delegates are who voted against me because those votes aren't recorded. Um, but I have had meetings with branches where people have kind of aired their concerns, which I, you know, completely understand. So um, I'm sort of... What uh, are they? Well, I think... I mean, there's a lot of different, you know, kind of ways in, this, in which this manifests, but I think ultimately what it boils down to is that sense of frustration that in government there are compromises that get made and the, the speed and the scale at which we are moving does not match that of the climate crisis. OK, and I but you were saying that. that before the vote, you're yes. saying it afterwards. Some of these people are going to want to see a change. I mean, we have spoken to some of those who voted against you. One of them told us, I haven't heard anything different from him in the last two weeks that I didn't hear in the last two years. So what, if anything, has actually changed? Well, ultimately, like I said, I think... Um as I get around the country, the conversations that I'm having with people are much more kind of in-depth than around kind of some of the issues and challenges of being in government. Uh, I think that the, um, the way that we communicate with our own members, uh, I think I need to kind of get out more on the road and spend more time with them because I've effectively been trapped in Wellington for much of the last two years. Yeah, and you have been doing that. And yes. four weeks ago, I think you said you'd talk to all of the branches, talk to the members, you'd set out your vision for the future. Have you yeah. done that? What's your vision? Well, it is simply that the Green Party needs to be an even bigger and stronger part of the next government. I mean, the, if people are frustrated at the pace of challenge... That doesn't it, sound like a new vision to me. Well, it's... What, what I said when I first stood for the leadership back in 2015 is that I was committed to taking us into government for the first time with ministers and then safely out the other side. Now, that job is not yet done, and, and climate change is still a problem. I'm pretty proud of the track record that I've got in getting us to the start line, but there is a lot more that we have to do. Yeah, I know all of that, but we're asking what's changed, because you said that you needed to listen, you needed to change. Here's a, here is another quote from a member. Mm who spoke to you uh, recently, he was extremely unimpressive. I've seen no vision for what the party can fall behind. So it doesn't sound like that message is getting through. Well, Connor, you know, I think that there will be people who uh, remain opposed mm. to my leadership. There have been people who, bef who were opposed to my leadership before the AGM this year as well. But ultimately, I am convinced that I have the support of the vast majority of the party and that actually the majority of the party understand that whilst we have a radical vision, the political system is what it is. And you have to, if you're going to be able to be in politics, you have to work with the system as it is. You have to try and reform it as a part of the system. But ultimately, you know, government is... is challenging. It's incredibly frustrating. It does not move at the speed or the scale of the challenges that we face. So, so is there a core group of members who are simply never going to support you as co-leader? Well, you'd have to, I mean, you clearly have asked them, but that, that's really for them to determine. And if there are, does that mean you don't need to change? No, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm not intending to change, but part of what I have to do is clearly is to continuously sell why it is that we are in government. I mean, Because this is a fundamental debate within the party, right? There are people who believe that uh, having a seat at the table isn't worth anything mm. if you have to compromise at all. What do you say to them? Well, look, I think... And, look, this has been a debate in the Green Party for as long as I can remember, and I was around in the early 1990s, and there were debates then about whether we should even be in politics at all. But having made the choice to be a parliamentary political party, to say that we, you know, we, we will be that part of the wider Green movement that does engage with the political system and tries to reform it from within, then by definition that comes with compromise for a party that's built around consensus. You have to build consensus with people who disagree with you as well as people who agree with you. And we can only go as far as the public gives us licence to, uh, to go. And that is the purpose of the wider Green movement, mm -hmm. which is to ensure you know, if you look at kind of Greenpeace and Forest and Bird and World Wildlife Fund, Generation Zero, the school strikes, you know, that, that movement is incredibly important in building pressure on the political system and demanding that we go further and faster than we have. And then the job of the Green Party inside Parliament and the council tables up and down the country is to do what we can with the circumstances that we've got in order to create change. Okay. That's, how, that's how the kind of jigsaw fits together in my mind. And it's a complicated jigsaw. It is hard to get everyone to agree. I understand that. But there is well, a question politics, here. Politics, by definition, you know, not everyone's going to agree. Of course, of course. But there, there is a question here about your party constitution mm. and stability. I mean, 225,000 Kiwis voted for a party led by you and Marama Davidson yes. at the last election, and then 32 Green delegates turned around and voted you out. 
Should the public be worried about who they're getting if they tick Greens in 2023? No, absolutely not. I mean, I think that the... the I mean, mechan- couldn't we do this all again next year? Well, the, the me- well again, the, I, th- I think it's, it's probably not appropriate for me, given that I'm a directly interested party, to you know, comment on the, on the Constitution. But I think if you look at our track record, you know, like any other political party, we've had our ups and downs. We are the only political party under MMP, the only support party under MMP who has increased our support in government. So we're polling higher now than we did on election night 2020. That was polling higher than we did in 2017. I think that if you ask the public at large, what they will tell you is that, you know, regardless of anything that's going on, talking about ourselves and so on, they can see the value that we're adding from inside government and in holding the government to account from outside government as well. Okay, let's talk about that. This is our last question. Uh, One of the big criticisms from members when that vote happened was that you don't do enough to critique the government. I know you can't do that in your own portfolio, but you can do it on everything else. So this is your chance. What's the government getting wrong? Well, look, let me just address this first because I don't actually agree with that. I think it's really important that people are able to see all of our caucus, right? If you look at the work that uh, Tiana Tuiana has done going to Damien O'Connor on some of the areas where we're falling down in agriculture. If you look at the pressure that um, Julianne Gent has been putting on Michael Wood about some of the funding um, decisions around uh, transport and so on, you can see that actually our caucus is you know, providing that critique of the things where we feel that the government is falling down. And that is the design of the cooperation agreement that we have with the government. And the government signed up to that, that we would have two members of the executive, you know, who would, who would you know, lead on those issues. And then we would have eight people outside okay. of the executive who would hold the government to account from the perspective of the Green Caucus. OK, we need to leave it there. Uh, Climate Change Minister and aspiring Greens co-leader, James Shaw, thanks very much for your time this morning. Thanks for having me. If I can say, our political panel returns Dr Lara Greaves, Janet Wilson and Josie Pagani. Plus, the Prime Minister and dignitaries from all over Aotearoa have descended on Turanga Waiwai Marae today. We take you there.